Well, hello, free people of the Rocky Mountain region, and welcome to this Free State Colorado interview. Today, I'm joined by Representative Brandy Bradley, representing House District 39, which encompasses most of Douglas County. Well, Representative Bradley, I hope you are well, and thank you for joining me today. It has been a long day, but thank you for having me. I know you've been very busy, so I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we got to get some information out to the people of Colorado about what's been going down, uh, what's been going on down at the state legislature. So I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So this year, you know, the state legislature has seen its fair share of controversial bills. And yet one of the bills you sponsored, most Coloradans would not think of as controversial in the least bit. Yet it was killed by House Democrats. Can you please tell us about your House Bill 1020? 10, excuse me, can you please tell us about your House Bill 1092 and explain why it was killed by House Democrats? Absolutely. I was very excited to run this bill. We did a lot of stakeholdering. Uh, it came to me over the summer, had some great um, resources behind this bill. And honestly, as a parent, couldn't believe that you could prostitute a child, buy a child, pimp a child, pander a child, and only receive probation. I, I thought this was the dark ages. I, I thought for sure something had to be wrong. And we continued to kind of dive in and we saw that these buyers of children were not getting punished. Most of them were getting probation. That is absolutely shocking. I mean, the most heinous crime imaginable, you know, somebody sexually exploiting a child, um, this child prostitution, these people are getting probation. So how did you, you know, can you give us a little bit of background? How did you get, uh, how did you hear about this type of legislation? Absolutely. I was invited by the Douglas County Commissioners to come to an anti-trafficking event. I naively thought that trafficking in our state looked like the I-25, I-70 corridor where kids were going to Park Meadows Mall, they were getting grabbed, they were getting sold in other countries. What it looks like in our country, in our states, our parents soliciting their children for drug money, for money whatsoever. Um, it looks like cheerleaders. It looks like soccer players. It looks like everyday kids that are getting sold by their parents. It's it really, it's a traumatic and tragic thing that's happening in the state of Colorado. And so, like you said, right now, current law, some of these people are getting probation. And what would your bill have done? Well, I would say most people are getting probation because those crimes are probation eligible and the trafficking or anti-trafficking organization we worked with goes on these stings and goes on these operations and sees that these guys just get a slap on the wrist. Um, they made it very confusing. The three people out of 50 that came in opposition talking about a trafficking statute that we have in Colorado that it has a minimum of eight to 24 years. That does not have any direct impact on the buyers of children, which is what my bill was focusing on. We were going after the supply and the demand, and the demand are these people that are getting off the hook after they solicit a child for sex and within days are back out doing it again. Wow. So you said you had about 50 people show up and to testify in support of your legislation. I mean, who is this made up of? I mean, who who is there supporting this oh, bill? So many people, anti-trafficking organizations, survivors, parents of survivors. We had a teacher testify about um, one of his students that was a victim. There were so many brave people that showed up to testify. It was amazing to see. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's it's a bigger problem than I think most people realize. Um, there's a lot of trafficking going on. It's not just what people think of in the movies. Uh, unfortunately, it's in, in suburban Colorado. So, yeah, holding these people accountable, these criminals, people who'd exploit children in that way. I mean, it's it's definitely a worthy goal. I mean, if the government has any any responsibility at all, you know, protecting children against these these predators seems to be seems to be it. Well, you you would think. I mean, I never thought that this bill had a possibility to get killed. I thought that everyone in the state house would want to fight to protect our most vulnerable, our children. And I had a great co-sponsor, um, or prime sponsor, excuse me, Rep English from El Paso, and she was just as ready to fight for the safe kids as I was. Um, they tried to pull her off the bill on Monday before the bill was heard on Thursday. We got that resolved because I went to media that put pressure on the um, speaker of the house. 
she was with me in the testimony and we both of us were completely devastated and disappointed in the eight Democrats that voted against this bill. Wow. Wow. I mean, was it, were there signs when this bill got assigned to the kill committee as opposed to like the judiciary committee? Did you kind of have some expectation that maybe uh, that was in the cards? You know, I think that I am the forever optimist. And when you see who's on judiciary, the progressive Marxists that are on judiciary that want no minimum sentences, I thought, you know what, maybe just maybe it's going to state affairs and it has a chance. And, you know, Rep Armagost came up to me and said, you know, this bill is going to get killed after two hours of testimony. And I just I felt the color kind of come out of my face and listening to these survivors. And I was going to they were going to know pretty soon that that everything that we had worked for, their testimonies couldn't sway the eight Democrats from voting against keeping pedophiles on the streets and protecting the children that they came to testify in favor for. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's so important, I think, that Colorado voters, that the the people of Colorado really just understand that we have legislators, we have these House Democrats who are willing to to play politics with children's safety and and basically, yeah, give these these horrible predators just a free ride. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. Well, I mean, you know, Brandon, honestly, last year when, and I keep bringing this up because I don't want it to fall by the wayside, when two Democrat women brought a bill forward to make it a class six felony to expose yourself and masturbate in front of a minor, and 27 Democrats voted against that, um, they brought amendments. Well, only if the minor's by themselves, if the minor's not in front of a parent, um, the minor has to be alone then we'll accept this. When when I saw that last year, I think that I knew how dark the Capitol was and that we there's a lot of people that are there not to protect children. Wow. Wow. I mean, in your mind, I know it's a lot of speculation, but what is the what is the primary reason why these House Democrats would would not vote in favor of of the, this bill? Well, one said um, judicial discretion which we gave that we gave four to eight years. We, we let mitigating factors. They said that a lot of these kids were trafficked themselves. Okay. Well, here are the mitigating factors, right? You can plead down. No one goes to, to prison for the four years. We know that criminals in Colorado are, are maybe going to jail for 50% of their actual time. So we knew that there were mitigating factors. We were given judicial discretion. We were giving, you know, a four to eight year sentence. So that really was nothing that they could really talk about. And one actually said that she would never want her abuser to go to jail to be abused. These are the things that they were saying. So it was mitigating factors, judicial discretion. And I don't really want anyone ever going to jail, even if they have raped me. And I thought, you know what? You don't get to legislate your hurt and brokenness for the people of your district. Are we voting for the people in our district or are we voting for ourselves? Because a lot of those Democrats have forgotten that it's the people's house. And that is what's so disturbing to me. Right. You're right. I mean, that's a great point. I'm sure that the, their constituents, their voters, the people in their community would completely support you know, penalizing people who are preying on children. It's, it, it's, it just shows how disconnected I think that the legislature is on some, in some level from the people, it, it, you know, there's a lot of talk recently about these vacancy committees, right? You know, I think it's a quarter, maybe it's a third of the, of those serving were appointed, not elected. Do you think that has anything to do with this disconnect between the public and the politicians? I, I think the disconnect is, is that they are not respecting how the constituents in their district vote. I think that they are playing God. I think that they now have a little bit of power and they've never had this power before and government is their idol. And by golly, they are going to vote according to their idol. When other people use God, our constitution, um, the people that voted us in, that is always in my mind. How would the people in my district want me to vote? It is clear that that is not what their their intention is. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. It definitely, you know, this authoritarian mindset of these people who think they can manage socially engineer society, you know, create it in their image, as opposed to, you know, just trying to represent the people and uphold the law and, you know, follow the constitution, right? It's a, too much to ask. They get that little bit of power and yeah, it goes straight to their head. That's exactly what we're seeing. Absolutely wild.
Well, like you mentioned earlier, you know, it seems there's a pattern of this pro-criminal behavior. Like you said, last year, 27 House Democrats voted against House Bill 231135, which would have increased penalties for the crime of indecent exposure in view of minors. You know, it seems that child predators are are not being held accountable or don't or that House Democrats don't want to hold them accountable. I mean, is there a, a larger pattern here in terms of of this kind of behavior? Well, I think that we see the state shifting to this pedophilia is not a crime and we need to hug these people and they're just attracted to children and there's nothing wrong with that. And we have this minor attracted persons that we're trying to change things to so that older men and women can have relationships with prepubescent children. And I do think that there is a push for the state of Colorado to legalize prostitution. I do. I think that we're going to start seeing legislation that is aimed towards minor attracted persons and legalizing prostitution. Wow. I mean, it, it seems hard to believe, right? I mean, you talk to the average person on the street, you know, it sounds like Sounds so crazy, so wild, so out there, but but here you have it. I mean, we have the voting, the votes are on record. You know what I mean? There's right. testimony on record. It's recorded. This is a pattern of behavior that people really need to be aware of. I mean, talk about a wake-up call. I, I think that when eight Democrats have no real reason to keep pedophiles on the street, you, the other thing was, this is typically a white conservative male with two children that is living in suburbia. And I was actually called a racist for saying that these white men are buying black and brown children, that I was just using it, you know, kind of to help promulgate my bill. And, you know, it, it it's, it's so frustrating to hear these people come after you when you know that you're here to legislate for all the kids of Colorado and that I'm just using black and brown kids when it's convenient for me. And, you know, Epps went on her tangent for three minutes. No one really knew what she was talking about and you know, let her go on her little tirade because she actually showed up for once to fulfill her position to represent the people of her district. Jeez, absolutely crazy. You know, another controversial bill that I, I believe was heard in the House today was this House Bill 24 1039, the non legal mm -hmm. name changes. What do people need to know about this bill? I mean, it's usurping parental rights. You know, your child lives with you. You know, every single thing about your child. As a mama bear, I went to the well and spoke for a long time today. I know everything about my kids. I'm sorry. There are some bad parents out there, but most parents are good parents. Most parents want the best for their children, know their um, mental, psychological, physical well-being, and they want these kids to be able to then go to school, change their name, and then hide it. From their parents and then these kids have to go back home and and the whole fear mongering these kids are going to kill themselves teachers need to protect these kids and you're like what, what do you think hiding secrets we we tell our children right all of life never hide secrets we protect you from the bad people the pedophiles that are now roaming the streets we protect you from those bad people but you should go to school let a teacher or a psychologist that doesn't really know you tell you that you should change your name no matter what you what if a, a little girl is being sexually assaulted by a neighbor and wants to change her name to be a little boy to hide the fact that she's a little girl you, parents shouldn't know about that it's a dangerous precedence and i hope everyone that experiences this sues the snot out of our out of our legislator yeah i mean it's it's definitely we've seen a lot of effort being made by certain legislators to to definitely go after families to take away the parents ability to to be a parent you know to give to pull kids away to get in between the kids and their families and you know it, what an opportunity it is for for people who maybe are, you know the people who are child predators right they could get in these schools they could get in different uh, positions of trust over the children and maybe convince them to to try being a, a different gender, to exploit them in a lot of ways. And now maybe they're protected because the parents aren't going to know about it. I mean, it, it is absolutely horrific. It is. And I think, you know, when, when they were locking down our schools and masking up our children and isolating them, they thought that that wasn't a problem. And now we're in a mental health crisis. And now we're telling kids hide secrets from your parents. And, and I, and I asked, what are the long-term studies? What are the long-term studies of mental health on children that hide things from their parents? And there's no studies. There's no data. In fact, representative Tatone had this big 
segment of transgender and that she deserves to be a person and she has dignity. And why are we so obsessed with trans kids? We're not obsessed with trans kids. You're obsessed with coming after my children. We're tired of you being obsessed to have secrets between parents and our children. We're tired of you taking our children away because we don't use the right pronoun. My first amendment, right? My belief in my Holy Spirit and my Lord is there's no such thing as anything but two genders. And I will not be compelled to speak pronouns that I don't believe in or talk about genders that I don't believe in. And I will not make my children do it, any of that either. Definitely, you know, standing up for parents, standing up for families, standing up for the voters in your district. What kind of uh, flack are you taking from your colleagues or from uh, activists out there? Oh, I mean, I have... For every 100 letters of support, I have two people going against me. I have activists saying that I'm inciting violence for talking about the eight Democrats that voted uh, for pedophiles, that I'm causing them to have death threats. There's no accountability on their part. You voted a certain way. You voted not to protect kids. You voted to keep pedophiles on the streets. You have to reap the consequences. I'm not telling anyone to make death threats or inciting violence. That is not me. That's not what I do. But they spin it. I have a... Bread and Roses, a group of lawyers that um, help the transgender community coming after me, wanting to threaten lawsuits, calling for my censure, calling for my expulsion. Guess what? Nothing's happened. This is the First Amendment. Right. They want us no, to no. shut up. I'm not going anywhere. I have four children counting on me and a district full of children counting on me. I'm not going anywhere. Well, definitely appreciate that. You know, I think that's what a lot of Coloradans are looking for is strong leadership, somebody who's standing up, speaking out, not afraid to, 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 to speak up. You know, we have so many people out there, unfortunately, who are, you know, attempting to be leaders, but then back down at the first sign of trouble, at the first sign of, of criticism, right? So definitely applaud you for, for your efforts in that regard. Thank you. I have a voice. I'm not scared to use it. I'm not scared of these agenda and this woke ideology that is literally harming our children. It's going to cause more suicides. And I think it's child abuse. Honestly, Brandon, to tell children that they were born in the wrong body, I don't care what your belief system is. What is that telling a child? You know what? Everyone else is made the right way except for you. And now you need to endure horrific experimental procedures for the rest of your life. When we know that 80 to 90% of kids after they go through puberty revert back to their biological birth. So it's plain and simple. And I'm not going to let any more kids be susceptible to this because I didn't speak out. Right, right. You have to do something. You have to speak out. You know, we, uh, we know better. We can't remain silent when with this kind of thing going on for sure. You know, I'm old enough to remember when we were supposed to accept ourselves for who we were, you know, that was the big thing, you know, you got to be happy with who you are and, um, you know, not be cr too critical of yourself, you know, but it seems like it's totally spun around and they're trying to force kids to to change who they are and, and confuse their identity in order to maybe manipulate them and push them in a different direction than, than the traditional life that, you know, has come to define so much of our society. 100%. I mean, the other bill that we heard is letting felonies change their names if they identify as trans. You know, and, and, and another one we heard was Division of Youth Services. Kids in those in the Division of Youth Services can have all these different rights. And, you know, there's got to be a point where we say you can't continue to erase biological women in sports um, for our safety. These kids in the Department of Youth Services have committed some horrific crimes. There are children, unfortunately, that commit rape, that commit sexual assault. And now we're telling kids that as long as they identify as a girl, they can sleep in the girl's room, they can shower in the girl's room, they can go to the bathroom in the girl's room, they can play sports against girls. And the leadership actually said, or the representatives, it's not really happening. Well, I have multiple examples of where girls are getting raped in bathrooms. Wow. Yeah, absolutely wild. I mean, it's it's hard to believe. It's hard to stomach and it's hard for people to I think to accept, but they need to accept it. They need to accept that this is happening, right? They need to understand what's going on because it, it, we know it just seems to get more extreme and they're going to keep take, going down this path well, unless the voters unless the people say enough, you know. Absolutely. 
I mean, we're seeing in red states, Montana just happened, Indiana just happened, where parents didn't agree to speak a child's preferred pronouns, and they've literally been taken away. We've seen Biden's secretary say that if you don't conform to your child's identity or preferred pronouns, we are going to start taking your children away and putting them with trans parents that will raise them accordingly. Parents have to wake up. The next step in Colorado is to take children from your homes. Wow, 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 wow. Well, what I mean, it, this is obviously one of the biggest issues facing Colorado. Like I said, like we we're, were talking about an issue that a lot of people don't want to face up to. But just briefly, uh, want to let you uh, go here soon so you can get some rest. I know it's been a, a lot of work down there, a lot of craziness. But what else do Coloradans need to know about what's going on in the legislature this year? You know, we have 15 bills coming after our gun rights. I mean, those are our Second Amendment rights. They're going to try to strip them away little by little. First Amendment rights. We've been told what we can and cannot say. Illegal alien, is not, we're not allowed to say that anymore. First Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights, what's next? They are literally taking away all of our liberties that we have been afforded by the Constitution little by little while we're looking the other way. I need Coloradans to vote differently, vote better, come to testify, be more involved in what's happening in Colorado. 100%. Couldn't agree with you more. And Representative Bradley, I really appreciate your time. Uh, hope you keep can keep us informed about what's going on down there. Uh, some of these egregious examples of this, these people stomping on our rights and, and enabling the Predator, child predators. It's it's hard to believe, hard to even talk about, but thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you for standing up for Colorado and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Oh, I love being on here. Thank you so much, Brandon, for everything you're doing and trying to keep everyone informed. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Well, take care. All right. Talk soon.